and they're listening. They say, we're ready. What about that? First Corinthians chapter 9, please. Lessons from the life of Paul. I want to try to finish this week with eight, but I think I have one more. I read to you from 2 Corinthians earlier. Paul said, We will not have you, brethren, we will not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia. We we're pressed out of measure, above strength, as much as we despair even of life. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know you not the day which run in a race, run all. A one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Are we an incorruptible? I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. So fight I. Not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring this subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. The Apostle Paul converted Christ from a life of wickedness. He became a man of courage, a man of compassion, and a man that looking for the coming of Christ. He looked for him and waited for him. But in Paul's life, he had conflicts. I want to talk to you this morning about conflicts. Now I'm not trying to solve all the world's problems, okay? We all have conflicts and battles. <clears throat> but unless we have things in order in our life, we will lose. Conflicts. First of all, we must know we are saved. Saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Not saved from automobile wreck. Automobile wreck. Saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Unless you know that, folks, defeat is already yours in the battle of life. You've already lost. There's no hope for you unless you come to Christ and receive Him as your Savior. And if you're here today and you don't know it, this is the day. It's not tomorrow. You don't have tomorrow. Secondly, first we know we're saved. Secondly, we know that it's imperative that they obey the Lord's command. That's imperative. If you don't want to follow Christ, just throw up and quit. If you don't want to do what he said, just lay it up now and quit. Do what God said. Be obedient to the Word of God, especially in trying to win others to Christ. Then thirdly, we must show forth Christ. That means separation from the world and dedication unto the Lord. I know God wants me to have a peaceful heart. Did you know God wants you to have a peaceful heart? He said, my peace, I'll live with you. I give it not like the world gives it, but my peace. And I want, God wants me to be tranquil in my spirit. And he wants me to rest on him, but sometimes things are not right, and I may not be responding as God wants me to respond. He said, uh-oh. Stop preaching and go to meditate. But God's Word gives us direction on how to win in the conflicts of life. 
If Paul had conflict and battles in his life, how in the world can I expect less? In our text, verse 24 and 24, 25, Paul is picturing the sports world. Know ye not that which run in a race, run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. We're all running the race. <clears throat> and here's the thing about it, running the race of Christ, we can all win. We're not in a sports race. Now, those in the sports world that are real athletes, they're tempered in all things. They're not going to be in training today and drunk tomorrow. They're going to be tempering. They're going, to, they're going to do what's correct or they'll never win the battle. They'll never win the race. They keep in training. I wish some of these ball players. I'd like to take some of them and put them in jail. But I'm going to tell you, they stay in training all the time just to win a game. Winning a ball game is not all there is to life. Now, I like to win. When I was in high school, we had a basketball coach one year. He was a little bitty fellow, a little bitty man. And he uh, didn't have another coach. And he said, uh, this game is to win. And the way you win is you put this ball through that onion sack up there. Back in Hurricane, those days, we didn't have that. We had onion sacks on the gold, fellas. Before I got out there, they, they bought some gold nets put up there. Putting the, putting the ball in the onion sack was the, the, the way to win. And I want to tell you, the way to win in life is put everything you have in God's onion sack. It's His and he, everything belongs to Him. Now, Paul gets our attention about conflict that we can identify with. Training and sporting events. Now, I love to play basketball. I did. I wouldn't want to play now. But, yeah, I had a problem. My leg was short. I can't jump very high. But I learned something. If you can't jump, just climb up the other player. <laughs> Listen, he gets, our, he gets our attention by that sports conflict. Then he changes it to spiritual matters in verse 27. He said, but I keep under my body and bring this objection. That's that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. He's talking about himself. About his own needs. By Kestra, he means one that's been put on the shelf. One that cannot be used by God. He's trying to get us to see how to win in this battle of life. Now, that's the introduction. I want to talk to you about disease. Well, we've been talking about disease for the last three months, haven't we? Coronavirus. Number 19. I, I don't know what to call it. That's a bad disease, but I want to talk to you about disease that's worse than that. I want to talk to you this morning about the disease of defeat. The disease of defeat. I have never met so many people who are defeated. I'm just normally the kind of person, just, I just talk to people. Sometimes my boys and friends say, Dad, please don't talk to anybody today when we go out. I love to talk to people. Now when I went to Bible school, I'd take one class four times before I could pass a speech class. I was so timid. But sometimes God just opened my mouth. He put something here that would have come out. He's talking about a castaway somebody put on the shift. Put aside. 
Somebody God can't use. And we're often defeated by disease and defeat. It's that double talk. No. People are defeated. And I've come to realize that many people are defeated because of self life. They can't see anybody themselves. And the self life is doomed to defeat. Paul said, I therefore shall run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one to be in the air. Shadow boxing. Paul said, I'm not shadow boxing. I'm in a real fight. We were in high school, we had a, one basketball coach was a, he had been a welterweight, uh, well, contender for the world championship. And his name was Johnson. And he wanted to teach us how to fight. He wasted his life on me. I'm about as coordinated as a goose with four legs. But fighting, he wants to show you, we're going to show you a shadow box. He, he put a light on his box on the wall. Paul doesn't talk about shadow box, he talked about a real fire. Paul was fighting a real fool all the time. And so are we. There are certain things that will defeat us, sin will defeat us. Little sin, big sin, known sin, unknown sin, sin of the world, sin of the flesh, sin of the devil, your life. All those things will defeat us. And Satan is using every scheme and every trick he can to defeat you in your life. And by the way, it always begins with the small thing. When I looked out Satan this morning, my heart just bounded inside of me. Missing church services. Well, I won't go today. My toe hurts. Oh, I got a backache. Okay. Small thing. Turn from the Word of God. I didn't have time to read this week. Did you have time to look at television? Did you have time to go to the grocery store? Did you have time to eat lunch? I didn't have time to read. Turn from a life of prayer. We are prone to turn away from prayer. We give up certain things that we know we should be doing as a child of God. We just quit doing them. How about using your tithe for something that doesn't glorify God? That, that's going to defeat your life. Sin defeats us. Sensitivity defeats us. Boy, are we ever sensitive. All of them, but some more than others. This is one place we must guard our lives carefully all the time. Be extra sensitive to what people say and what they do. Unkindness. Sharp criticism. People misunderstand what you're doing. You may be doing it for the glory of God. And then criticize her. If we're not careful, we'll be sensitive and we'll get upset about it. Unfair gossip, conversation about you. And if we're not careful, that sensitivity will defeat us. <laughs> By the way, this thing is really sensitive works both ways. what others say and do in regard to us and how we respond to what they say and do. How sensitive are you? The selfishness will defeat us. Selfishness. Sin defeats. Sensitivity defeats. And selfishness will most certainly defeat us. And many Christians are defeated by this one thing. In the early days of the New Testament, Ananias and Sapphira were defeated by selflessness. They lost their lives. They wanted what they wanted. They didn't care what God wanted. So there's a disease called defeat. And if you're not careful, you'll catch it. And your life will be ruined because you'll have everything come along defeat you. Let's talk about desire, Christians. Paul had a threefold desire. 
First, he wanted to glorify God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 31, he said, He that glorifies, let him glory in the Lord. Glorifying God should always be our aim. Now, glorifying God means that he has his place in our life. And God's place is not number one. You can't put a number on God. You know why? For he is all and in all, Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. He's all or none. So don't come to me and say, well, God's number one in my life. He's God and He's God of all and He is God. He's not number one. He's just God. We all belong to Him. He belongs to all of us. But we don't belong at all. Paul wanted to glorify God. He wanted to have a useful life. He said, lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. The fear of my life many years have been that I'd do something and God put me on the shelf. Now, I'm going to believe in this church sooner or later, okay? Guys, I hope you're looking good. I hope you got somebody in line. But I won't do something before I leave here and be a castaway for God. I want to be when I preach my last sermon here as your pastor, Dr. Phil, you could call me back any time to preach a hoorah sermon. You know what a hoorah sermon is? That's the people when everybody's happy about it. I don't know how to preach me to those. I want my life to be useful. He wanted to be useful. God didn't want us to be put on the shelf. But there are people that have been put on the shelf by God. Sin has ruined their lives and God has put them on the shelf. They're still His, but they're not useful. I was going through a chest of drawers the other day and I found an old pocket knife. I've carried that thing to Africa and France and all over the world. I picked up and looked at it. I put it back because I don't want to see it no more. But it's got a broken blade. And it's got one blade that's sharpened down. There's nothing left but a little bit of coin. Now it's still mine. But it's not useful to me. So I put it away. And you know what? There are some people that have let their lives go so far that God has put them on the shelf and he can't use them anymore. Well, they're still his. But he can't use them. You may belong to the Lord, but are you useful? Can he use you? And Paul wanted to point people heavenward. M.J. Park. He hoodwinked me into getting the bus ministry. And he said, uh, Sonny boy, the goal is to get people to heaven. He was right. Paul wanted to point people to heaven. Do you? Do you live like you want people to go to heaven? Do you live like you're going to heaven? Paul said that he had to fight self. He said, so fight I. There's a lot of things to fight. I to fight self. He said, I keep under my body. He had a desire to point others to heaven. He knew that he could only do that when he was totally separated from the Lord himself. Now you can be separated from the world. But if you're not separated under God, you're useless. You like going to a butt headed cow. They're not worth anything. 
Separate unto God. How do you feel about pointing out to Christ? Do you really want to? Has it ever been a burning desire in your heart to get other people saved? I tried to talk to a man the other day in the grocery store. He said, I don't want to hear that mess. I said, okay. You know what? I cleared my hand, my heart of him. And by the way, I said pretty often, he won't forget that. Do you want to send people to go to heaven? If you're going, do you want anybody with you? Now, I don't mind being alone once in a while. But I don't want to be alone all the time. I want to be around God's people. I pretty, I'm for real when I saw you this morning. I, I'm for real. I'm encouraged about the church. You may not be, but I'm encouraged about the church. The fact that you keep coming, that says to me, you want to go forward. So, you can succumb to the disease of defeat, or you can follow the desire of what God wants us to have, follow Him. And one last thing, you can die to self. Disease of defeat, Desire of a Christian, a death to self. Now, I mentioned this last week. Your worst enemy is yourself. I'm not your enemy. Well, you may think I'm not. I'm not your enemy. Your worst enemy is you. And Paul knew that. He said, this is the enemy that I have and I'm fighting all the time. Likewise, reckon you yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign your mortal body, they should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither give ye your members an instrument of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourself unto God. That's the answer, folks. As those that are alive from the dead. And your members an instrument of a righteousness unto God. Romans chapter 6, verse 11 to 13. Then he said, Likewise reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. Dead to sin. Self is your enemy. Self is stubborn. Self is deceptive. Watch it. Watch out. Self will do anything before it dies. I want you to listen carefully. Self will work. Self will teach Sunday school. Self will be an usher. Self will work as a deacon. Self will even become a preacher and try to preach at the same time self be reigning in the life of the man trying to preach. Likewise, reckon ye yourself to be dead indeed unto sin. Death. Self won't die by itself. You have to help kill it. Help God kill it. This is a fight. Paul knew it. And I know it. And the only solution and hope is death for self. Self has to die. Listen. For your death and your life is hid in Christ. Do you really believe that? Do we live like it? Do we act like it? Now listen, Jeremy, you must know the truth. We must face the truth about the self-life. The life of the flesh. Self-seeking. Jealousy. 
envy, malice, whatever it may be. Negative things, positive things, but self. You have to be no true about yourself. You have to watch it. Be on, on guard all the time. Young people have to watch. Old great beards like me have to watch. Mother and dad have to watch. We all have the same battle. I want to win the battle over self-life. Do you? I want Christ to be preeminent in my life in all things. The older I get, the more I want it. When I was a kid, when I was down. You know I was a kid when I went down. I was a green, I was green in the grass. I had all the answers. Now I don't even have the questions. But I want Christ to be preeminent in my life. Till the day I die. I'm not quite finished preaching here yet. You may get to take me out anyway. I may die right here in this pulpit. If you do, y'all say hallelujah chorus, okay? I want to be victorious. I want to win the battle. I want to be supreme in all that I do. Oh yeah, you say. You don't have my problem. No, I have my problem. You must reckon yourself dead. What does that mean? Just say, I'm dead. And mean it. Count yourself as crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh... I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. You know what our danger is? We've heard that verse so many times. It's like John 3.16. It will just pass by. If you're going to ever mount anything for God, you have to learn something about dying to self. You say to me, Pastor, are you dead to self? I like Paul, I die daily. I wake up in the morning sometimes so aggravated. How many people wake up in the morning aggravated sometimes? Yeah, don't tell a lie. Sometimes I have not slept good and I get to, I go there, why did not sleep good? And I have to say to self, self, <coughs> let's go to the throne. Let's have a barrel. Let's die. I'm crucified with Christ. Dead to self. Dead to my own ambition. Dead to my desires. But alive to Christ. Is that where you are? I'm going to be alive to what he wants for my life. You must wreck himself to be dead. Some mornings I wake up. I now hear the Mars and Park call. I heard Africa and my heart goes out to the south world. Down inside me I have a burning desire to see those that have never had a chance to come to Christ. Do you? Then you die daily. Paul said, I die daily. That must be in our thinking every day. That must be in our prayer life, day after day, hour after hour, moment. It is a battle. 
Is it right? Yes, it is about it. But the first step is to reckon yourself that I am dead with Christ. But then realize you've been raised with Christ too. Live in the fullness. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a forethought. Glory to God. Listen. We died with him, we raised him, and he can help us to win this battle of the self life. Make a conscious decision. Now I want to say this to you young folks. Half the battle of living the Lord is won when you make a conscious decision to live for Him. I'm talking about one you really mean. I'm not talking about some emotional moment. When your girlfriend leaves and you say, Oh, I can't live without her. Lord, I'll, I'm talking about make a conscientious decision to live for Christ. That's half the battle. Make sure that you're never going to concede defeat. You're never going to give up. You catch yourself holy and completely the Lord Jesus Christ in his power. We sing the song and half of us don't believe it. There's power in the blood. Do you believe there's power in the blood? If there's power in the blood then we don't need to worry about all this. I have not worried one minute about this pandemic that's going on. Now I've tried to be careful. The only thing I've been conscious about Take care of those I love, not try to anybody. But you know what? I've had peace in my heart. I've had, I've had such peace. Now, I may die from it next week, okay? But I still have peace about it. If I die from it, you just know something. I'll be better off than you are. <clears throat> oh, to be like the blessed dreamer. This is my constant longing in prayer. Let down forfeit all the worst treasures. Jesus, thy perfect likeness to bear. I'm not playing, folks. This time of my life, I don't have time to play. Okay? I'm dead serious. If a man of our church is going to survive, the church will have to die to self. The whole church will have to die to what God wants to self and let God bring the person he wants to be, your pastor. Do I know it is? I know it is. It's one God wants. He said, well, wait, I don't care. It's a wonderful thing to be saved, folks. On the way to heaven. I want to ask you, is your desire to be like him as you live every day here below? If it is, there's conflict in your life. There will be conflict until the day you die. But I read this in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, and sometimes my feet become Pentecostal. All things in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. We are more than conquerors. Conflicts, they're coming. And I want you to know something. You're all used to me. Okay? His old shoe we can just wear. But when you get a new path, you're going to have some conflicts. I'm warning you. But you know what you do? You take them to the Lord. Thank you for your blessings. Now, I know life is a battle, but I know we're on the victory side. I thank you for that. I pray that you take these simple thoughts and use them.
bless to the hearts of the people now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thanks and God bless you.